Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of do, 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 Draw with Rob With me, Rob Bidolf That's me sitting at the very desk that I'm sitting at right now On the back of the latest Draw with Rob book called Monster Madness Available in all good bookshops now <laughs> um, I'm a children's author and illustrator You might have seen some of my books before this is one of my favourite stories, actually, that I've written. It was my second book. It's called Grrr. It's all about a bear called Fred who loses his growl. He's an award-winning, gold medal-winning bear. Um, there's like this thing called the Bear Olympics and the loud growl is one of the events and he always wins it. He always wins it. But can you see, look, somebody lurking there in the background has got other ideas for this year's competition. So it's a fun one. Check it out. Maybe you've seen this one called Show and Tell about a class of school children who bring in really crazy things to school for show and tell. For example, let's see. Look, this chap has brought in the Great Pyramid of Giza and the Sphinx. And look, Violet has brought Big Ben in. Somebody's brought an alligator and a racing car. So yeah, it's a fun story that. It's super funny. If I do say so myself. But we're here today to draw a picture not to read the books but to draw pictures and i thought i'd draw you another character from my brand new novel peanut jones and the illustrated city my chapter book my first chapter book you see Woo cool um and uh so this story peanut here she finds a magic pencil she draws a door with the pencil she goes through the door and she finds herself in this illustrated city and they meet all sorts of different characters in this illustrated city there's like a comic book area um, and so they meet like a superhero character and in the comic book area there's like giant pandas walking around and uh, you know those kind of cute like kawaii little cupcake characters that kind of thing so not everybody looks human like these guys because it's an illustrated world there's no sort of there's no limits to the imagination and let's go I'm just going to go to this bit I don't want to show you who we're going to draw quite yet I'm just going to show you a little bit of the story first so to give you a bit of the background uh, the characters they've arrived in uh, the illustrated city and they've been told to meet up with um, one of the resistance operatives so one of the people who's going to help them on their mission in this story and um, they have to go to this place called Inky Lake to meet this per this person they don't know who this person is or where to meet them so what they do um peanut asks peanut gives her little sister whose name is little bit uh, she gives her her um pens and pencils and because whatever you draw in this city it becomes real so she, peanut says to little bit right you need to draw us a tent to stay the night in you know we need to keep it nice and subtle so that nobody can find us and this is what little bit draws <laughs> she draws this tent which isn't very subtle and so they all get they sort of all bed down for the night in this tent and they are awakened just as just as they're falling to falling asleep this happens peanut yawned again just as her eyes were starting to close she heard a faint rustling noise outside the tent at first she thought she'd imagined it but then there it was again a twig snapped she sat up holding her breath there was definitely someone or something out there. She grabbed Little Tail. Little Tail is the name of the pencil. She grabbed Little Tail, summoned all of her courage and burst out through the tent flap. And there, in the moonlight, was the biggest, most ferocious looking alligator she's ever seen in her whole life. <gasps> Peanut tried to scream, but the only sound that came out was a rather pathetic whimper. It was, however, it was, however, enough to wake Little Bit Rockwell and Doodle, whose heads instantly appeared through the tent flap. Oh my god, yelled Rockwell. Alligator, shouted Little Bit. Doodle disappeared back inside the tent. <gasps> oh, come now, didn't your parents ever tell you not to judge a book by its cover? Little Bit stopped screaming. Peanut dropped the pencil. Unless they were very much mistaken, the terrifying looking creature in front of them had just spoken. <gasps> not only that, but he had the friendliest, softest voice imaginable. He sounded, well, nice. So this alligator here is in fact a good guy and a very scary looking alligator doesn't necessarily mean that it's a very scary looking alligator if you see what I mean. He might look scary but as it turns out here he's not at all scary. He's really nice and he's helpful and he's one of my favourite characters in the whole book. His name is Jonathan Higginbottom the alligator <laughs> and do you know what his dream job is he wants to be a nursery nurse he wants to look after little children at school but because he looks like this he can't get a job doing it which isn't very fair is it you should not judge a book by its cover 
as Jonathan Higginbottom himself says. So today I thought I would show you guys how to draw Jonathan Higginbottom, the alligator. <laughs> I hope that's okay. Right, so what you're gonna need is a piece of paper. You're going to need a pen or a pencil to draw with. That's it. You might want something to color with a bit later on when we color our, our alligator in, but that's it. And this is how Draw With Rob works. I'm gonna break this drawing of Jonathan Higginbottom, the alligator, down into little bite-sized pieces. No pun intended, bite size. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> um, so I will draw a little bit of the drawing here. You can pause the video and just copy what I do. Start me up again, I'll draw a bit more. Then you draw, I draw, you draw, I draw, you draw, I draw, you draw. And at the end, we'll end up with a lovely picture of Jonathan Higginbottom. Okay, shall we start? Let's do this, shall we? Now, I think we will start up here. So top right area of your picture. I want you to start, so about here on your, your piece of paper, I want you to start by drawing a sort of arch shape like that. So like an upside down U shape, okay? Lovely, easy start, huh? Right. From the bottom right-hand side of your U-shape, I want you to draw a tiny little horizontal line, like that. Then from the other end of that line, guess what, we're gonna draw another U-shape exactly the same, like that. From the bottom right side of that U-shape, I want you to draw a much longer horizontal line, about four or five centimeters long. So we're really heading towards the right hand side of our page now. And the next thing to do is two more of those upside down U shapes, but a bit smaller. So we can do one like that, a little horizontal line, and then another one like that. But this time we're gonna continue it down a bit lower than the rest of ours. Okay, right. So next, let's go, hang on, let me think. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to the beginning actually, that's what I'm gonna do. Let's go back to the beginning. We're gonna come out to the left about a centimeter, okay? Then I want you to start curving around like that, down to there, and then we're gonna go all the way around. We're gonna keep on curving underneath the rest of our drawing, and we're gonna come up, start sort of curving up until we get to about there. And then we're gonna stop. So you stop sort of in the middle of those two upside down U's, okay? Tricky one, this. A little bit fiddly, a little bit fiddly. I have to work out how I'm gonna do it myself, actually. Right, so let's think. Right, this is what we're gonna do next. From here, so from the end point here, I want you to curve around here, cross over the top of that line, and then we're gonna go all the way along. We can make it a little bit wavy doesn't have to be dead straight, a little bit wavy, and then curve up right at the end, like that, and join up with the side. I wonder if you can see our alligator's head starting to take shape. Now we have actually drawn an alligator before, way back, video number 13 was an alligator, and so there's a quite a few similarities between this and that, but it's slightly different too. But if you've done that one, you're, you've got a little head start on the rest of us, because you've done it already to a certain degree okay next let's give our alligator what should we do next let's do some eyes so in these two those first two upside down u shapes that we did let's draw a couple of nice big circles one there and one there okay and then in the middle of those slightly left of center maybe let's draw a couple of pupils and look our alligator is awake while we're here, while I've still got my thin pen, I'm gonna do a couple of nostrils because this is gonna be our alligator's nose here. You know how I do nostrils? We do a sort of circle with a swirl coming out of it. Like that. And we do the same there, but a mirror image. There we go. Little nostrils. And this is the bit that's gonna really turn our alligator into an alligator because we are gonna give Jonathan Higginbottom here some teeth. This is how we do it. So if we imagine that wavy line that we drew is our alligator's mouth, Let's draw a tooth coming up out of it, like that. So a triangle coming up out, okay? The next tooth is gonna be going downwards, so let's do an upside down triangle, like that. In fact, let's do a few of them. Slightly different sizes. How many should I do? Let's do seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven. Like that. And then at this end of the mouth, we'll do some going up, shall we? So we'll do one, two, three, four, five. There we go. Alligator, really starting to take shape now, isn't it? He's cute, I do like this character. He is one of my favorites in the whole book. Okay, the next thing to do, uh, let's do. Our, let's start on our alligator's body now. So, Jonathan Higginbottom is huge. He's one of these giant alligators. You know, I, he, I, I can't believe I just said that as if you know, you know, like one of these giant alligators you just see walking down the street, yeah? You don't see them walking down the street, but you might have seen them on a David Attenborough documentary or something, but he's really huge and sort of quite, almost like quite muscly, I think. That's how I think of him. So we are gonna draw, because I think the last alligator I did, video number, whatever I said it was, number 13, is very sort of long and thin. Jonathan Higginbottom's much bigger. So from about here, so from, let's say from beneath the teeth here, so right near the end, I want you to draw a curved line that comes down our page like that and starts curling around, but goes not quite to the bottom of the page, but getting on for the bottom of the page. And then when we get level with his cheek here, like that, we're gonna stop, okay? And then what we're gonna do is, we're gonna draw a sort of a line that crosses the end of that curve, like that. So it's sort of like a sideways T shape. At the bottom of that line, I want you to come out and then go back in, in a little triangle shape. Then we're gonna come down and go off in that direction. Another little triangle shape. And then we're gonna do a third little triangle shape, this time coming down here and going back up there. Okay, and these are gonna be his little crocodile, not crocodile, alligator toes. Then from that point, we're gonna go back up to about there. And look, we've made one of his legs. And these legs are gonna be coming out of a little sort of folds in his skin. So what we do from the top here, we're gonna draw a little curved line like that. And then we're gonna do another one over here like that. It sort of overlaps the end. And then let's do another one coming up there. And then one more going up there. And even one coming up there. So it's like they're coming out of like folds in his skin. Let's give him another front foot here. So we're gonna do a very similar thing, but we're gonna come down in a curve there, down in another curve there. This is quite a tricky drawing, this. But you guys, what video number is this? It's like 103 or something. So you have had plenty of practice at drawing along with me. So I am, I have faith that you guys are equal to the task, no matter how tricky these drawings are. And remember, you can pause me if I'm going too fast, just pause me and just do exactly what I do and you'll end up with a really good drawing, I promise you. Okay, so two little curved lines like that. Then we're gonna do some more of those triangle toes. So we're gonna come out here, go up there. That's our first little triangle. Then we're gonna come down at an angle like that. Go back up, whoop, like that. And then last of all, we're gonna go out at an angle like that and join up again. So there we go, another little alligator foot. Okay, the tummy coming all the way down and around. We're gonna make that tummy go behind that leg. And Matt, so imagine that line continues through like that, okay? And we're gonna stop about there. So stop 10 centimeters or so from the end of your page. And then we're gonna do another one of these legs. So let's do, remember we started by doing that sort of T shape at the end. Then we're gonna add our toes, one triangle, two triangle, and then three triangles, like that. And then another line going up there. So that's gonna be the back leg of our alligator. And let's add some more of those funny little foldy bits, just like that. There we go. And then this line continues through that leg. It goes down and we're gonna take it off the page because our alligator's too big to fit on our page. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna draw the back of our alligator now. So coming out of the cheek here, we are gonna, first of all, we're gonna do a curved line that comes down like that. It's gonna stop about there. So not too far in a curve like that. And then we're just gonna add a couple more little lines in there. So it looks a bit like a bird's foot or something. And then coming out of the top, we're gonna to go up a bit, down, and then we're gonna carry on off the page again as well. And look, 
There's our alligator's body. Cool, huh? Pretty easy. Now, the alligator, they have these kind of, a bit like dinosaurs, they have these sort of little lumps, these sort of little plates on their backs. So what we're gonna do, they get a sort of that shape, a sort of oblongy shape. So I'm just gonna add some down the edge of his back, first of all, just like that. You can add as many or as few as you want to your drawing. And they're gonna get, as we go further down the back, they're gonna get slightly more spaced apart and maybe even slightly smaller, like that. So the nearer, the further down the tail we go, the further the spacing apart is, like that. And then this bit we're gonna leave like that, but here we're gonna add a few more of these plates. But because they're sort of more on the area of the back that we can see, we're gonna draw the whole oblong this time, like that. And we're just gonna follow the shape of the back down. As I said, we're gonna keep on getting a little bit smaller as we get nearer to the end of the tail, like that. And we're just gonna add a third row here. And then that's it. Three little rows of these plates. Like so. And I've sort of arranged them in a bit of a sort of brick-like pattern so they're not exactly lined up. Okay. I'm gonna to switch to my thin pen now, and from these sort of weird little foldy things we did, I want you to draw a line that comes up, curves around, and is gonna join up with the chin, just straight underneath those teeth on the left. Okay, like that. Then I want you to imagine that line carrying on through, like that, through to that leg there, and then, comes down and around and disappears off to the side again, like that. Because alligators, they have this, if, I, if I've been saying crocodile, I really do apologize. You really shouldn't mix up crocodiles and alligators because they're not the same breed at all, are they? It's terrible that I've done that. Um, so I apologize if that's what I've been doing. Um, but alligators, they have this sort of slightly different texture on their tummies. It's a slightly different texture with these sort of horizontal stripes across. So that's why we've done that. Now, Jonathan Higginbottom here. Do you remember I said he was a very jolly alligator, despite his sort of fearsome looks? He's a very friendly, very jolly looking alligator. And that's kind of accentuated by the fact that he wears a bow tie. So right in the middle of that area there, I want you to draw a little circle. And then coming off of that circle, two sort of curved end ended triangles like that. To make a bow tie and if you add just a couple of little lines like that coming out of the middle bit it really looks like a bow tie doesn't it okay a couple more bits we need to do with our pens before we start coloring first is we are going to add some remember i said it was this area was sort of stripey so i'm going to add lots of sort of horizontal stripes that go down his tummy like this and I'm going to keep them quite horizontal because it helps us suggest the form of Jonathan Higginbottom too. So I guess they're starting to sort of curve as we get to this bit that goes underneath the leg and then by the time we get down here they're sort of curving around his belly area like that. And don't worry if they're not totally evenly spaced. Nothing in nature is too perfect in terms of geometry, so don't worry too much about that. And we're gonna go right to the end, like that. And there you go. That is the outline of Jonathan Higginbottom. The last thing you can add to give him a bit of expression are eyebrows. I'm gonna give my, I'm gonna make my Jonathan Higginbottom look a bit cross, look a bit scary, even though he's not very scary. We're just gonna add two eyebrows like that. <laughs> And there he is. That is Jonathan Higginbottom. Oh, there's one other thing that I forgot to do. We need to add the slightly different colour change in his face here. So just from where that eye joins his face, we're just going to add another thin line that sort of comes down a bit close to his mouth, like that, and then it's just going to disappear behind those teeth. And that will just help us when we do our colouring it in, in a minute. Okay. Complicated one, isn't it? But you know, this is a middle grade book, slightly older children. The drawings are a little bit more complicated. 
I'm sure you're equal to the task, but we are now gonna go away and we're gonna color in our drawing, okay? So, it's up to you what color you color in your alligator. In, I'm gonna do mine, the usual sort of greeny, sort of dirty, greeny, browny sort of color, but yours could be any color you like, rainbow colored, if you like. All of these little plates can be different color. Go for it, anything you like. I, I really love seeing your multicolored drawings, especially as this character lives in an illustrated city, who's to say? what color he is, because somebody drew him in the first place, didn't he? So there are no rules here at all. So you have fun. I'm gonna go into super speed mode, so I will see you back here in 20 or 30 seconds, okay? Ready? Three, two, one, let's go. Okay, so there is my coloured in Jonathan Higginbottom. So you can see I've gone for the usual sort of green shades. Um, but, but I don't know if you can see, what I can, I've added lots of little textural elements, lots of little lines and sort of hashes here and there, and some dots and some circles, just to add that sort of um, slightly alligator skin texture. Very similar to when we did the very first drawing we did of Gregosaurus and the other dinosaurs that we've drawn, Nancy and... Um, who else did we do? We did Sue. We did various dinosaurs and dragons, and I've, um, I've sort of treated it as, in a sort of similar way. Although this is a much more um, complicated drawing, I guess. Um, and you can see I've reflected that in the way that I've coloured it. So there's lots of variations in shade, and I've had a light source coming in from here. So there's some shadows underneath all those plates, and I added a bit of, with my pen, I added some little textural elements as well. And even on the teeth, you know, bits of shadow on the right hand side of the teeth and the eyes to make the whole thing a little bit more convincing um, but don't worry if you haven't done that if yours is flat color or patterns or anything like that it's just as just as good and I cannot wait to see your drawings of Jonathan Higginbottom let's not forget to sign our drawings so here we go I keep signing my whole name these days don't I there we go Jonathan Higginbottom by Rob Bidolf. <laughs> there we go. Um, as I said, he's one of my favorite char characters in my new book. Here he is, in fact. There's Jonathan in The Peanut Jones and The Illustrated City. So check the book out to see how he features in the story. It's available now from all good booksellers, wherever you get your books online or in person. Go to your local bookshop if you can. That would be the best thing if you fancy reading the book. But I would love to see all of your drawings, obviously. Get your grown up to take a picture of your drawings and post it on social media using this hashtag, Draw with Rob. That way I will get to see it. If you're watching on Facebook, just add your drawing in the comments below. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn your notifications on. That way you'll know when I'm posting another Draw with Rob video. Um, you can also follow me on the social medias for that reason too. And best of all, I would say subscribe to my newsletter. So go to this website, robbidoff.com forward slash news, fill in your name and your email address. And that way you'll get straight to your inbox. You'll get all the latest Rob news, including news of new Draw With Rob videos and new books and live events and all that kind of thing. And there'll be some special content as well for subscribers. So you definitely, if you like my stuff, subscribe to my newsletter. Why not? It doesn't cost you anything. You won't get any spam, I promise. So um, do it. Right, I've had a lot of fun showing you how to draw Jonathan Higginbottom. I hope you've enjoyed drawing him with me. One of our more complicated videos, definitely. But as I said, you guys, I know you're equal to the task, so I can't wait to see what you've come up with. I'm going to be back very soon uh, with another Draw With Rob video, so keep your eyes peeled for those. In the meantime, keep on drawing, be kind to each other, keep those pencils sharpened, and I'll see you very soon. Bye, everyone.
here I am again popping up at the end of your video and I'm here to tell you all about the brand new Draw With Rob activity book. It's called Draw With Rob Monster Madness and I think you're really going to like it. I mean of course inside you are going to meet him, her, don't forget about him and of course my favourite her. So listen, this book is full of puzzles. Um, it's got lots of things where I've started off the drawing and you guys need to finish it off. We have got mix and match monster games in there. We've even got like a monster party invite kit for you to use for your own monster parties. As well as that, we've also packed it full of the regular draw alongs all of which you get a little picture frame you can do your drawing in and there's perforated edges for you to tear the pages out, stick them up on your fridge or send them out to your relatives. And then of course, once you finish the book, you qualify for this exclusive monster artist certificate that you get to fill in, frame it and put it up on your wall. Now this book I think is perfect for any little monsters out there. And guess what? It's out. Now, you can get it right now from wherever you get your books. So go and have a look online or better still, visit your local bookshop. Right, I'm gonna go now properly, let you get on with your day. Thanks so much for drawing along with me. Don't forget, check out this book and I'll see you soon. Bye everyone.